Hey, hi everyone and welcome to a brand new video tutorial. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Firebase real-time database. So it's a very popular database for a lot of mobile applications. And recently it has been growing in popularity in web applications as well as games and anything else. So this video is going to cover the introduction to Firebase itself and then move on to covering the real-time database. This video is a broad and general introduction to Firebase real-time database, meaning you will be able to understand the concepts behind it, the building blocks of it, the data types, the structure, what makes, the, what makes this a good database, and how you can use it. So this is not using it with any language. I do have tutorials with using Firebase real-time database with Python, so you can check those out. But this is just going to be in general about the database itself without any drivers. All right, to get started, so what is Firebase? Firebase has been growing in popularity in recent years. It was actually developed in 2011 by Firebase Inc., but it was acquired by Google in 2014. Um, it's really popular in the mobile and web dev community. So the reason for that is that it's just, it's just a very simple and straightforward service that you can use. It's technically a backend as a service that provides a series of uh, services and tools that you can use in your applications to help your application improve and grow and build upon what you already have. So it's really good because Using Firebase is very powerful because a lot of the things, the services it provides you with require very little code for you. So instead of having to build so many things in your back end from scratch, you would just have to refer to Firebase and then it would just perform a lot of things that are already built in. Now, what do I say? What do I mean when I say this? Like, what are the different services it provides? So there are a series of services. The first and the a um, very popular one is the analytics one. So this is kind of related to Google Analytics. So you would use this to be able to grow your app. You would use all sorts of data analysis and data science tools that it provides you to make recommendations, to test for your users, to have um, a, a series of things that would enable you to better understand the activity on your application, to better understand what makes your application fail. So in case that your application crashes a lot, you could have bug reports as well. You could have reports from your users when they're active, what do they do, how active they are. So there's a lot of information you can gather using this. You also have a wide variety of features that you can benefit from and use in your application. The first is actually the authentication feature. So authentication is for user management. So this is what you would use to sign in with email and password and create an account with email and password. But you could also sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with GitHub. So this is you'd be using your different um, credentials from these different websites, these different um, you could say services that we have on the internet and then you could use those to sign into your application and Firebase is sort of the gateway to that and that's, that's what it helps you do um, using the authentication feature. Alright, so I have a tutorial on using the authentication feature with Python actually, so you can check that out if you're interested. All right, moving on. We also have cloud storage. So most applications or startups nowadays have a, have some sort of media files on their applications. So we would have images, we would have videos, we would have um, all sorts of things. And for you to have to store them somewhere, you need to store them on the cloud for your users to be able to access them. And that's what we have cloud storage for. So cloud storage was initially a Google product. However, it merges with Firebase and provides the Firebase cloud storage. And you can use the storage to store, store documents, photos, videos, anything your user is uploading or viewing from your application, you can store it there and that media would sort of um, be directly available. You could also use authentication combined with storage to enable your users, your application to keep track of which user has uploaded which photos. So the way Instagram knows that these photos are yours because you uploaded them. So these photos are, are associated with user X. All right. Now, another thing we have are the real-time database and the Cloud Firestore. So Firebase actually provides two different database types. Cloud Firestore was originally a Google thing, but it also merged with Firebase upon acquiring the company. Real-time database used to be the actual 
Firebase database, but now it's called real-time database. So both of them actually do work in real time, meaning they're always syncing across devices for any changes. So you wouldn't have to um, refresh to be able to see any changes. You would just see it in real time. And they're both hosted on the cloud and they're both NoSQL databases. If you want more information on NoSQL databases, I have a video explaining those in five minutes and you can check that out as well. So these are some of the services that Firebase provides. Now let's just go ahead and check out Firebase actually on its website and understand more things. So this is console.firebase.google.com. So this is where you would go to check out your Firebase projects and to be able to access the Firebase itself. So I'm signed into my Google account, which is my account for this channel. And this is what you have to do to be able to use Firebase. So you need a Google account, the same way you do for any other service. Now, these are some demo Firebase projects, some sample projects that I can access. So I'm just going to access this one. You could also create a project. You could also um, view an old one. So it depends on what you want to do with your work. Now, let's just go to this one. So Firebase Real-Time DB Demo. So I was using this project actually for a series of tutorials on the uh, Firebase Real-Time Database with Python, with Firebase. So you can check that out as well if you're a Python programmer and you're interested. So this is the dashboard that you have. This is your project overview. It has all the sort of data that you need for your project as well as all the features that you need to develop your project. Now, here you can have some sort of um, statistics that keep track of the downloads and uh, uploads to your database and to your storage at the same time. So you could use those to keep track of how much data is being pushed into your database the whole time and what you can do about it. So here you have the authentication. So we discussed what authentication is and the different features it provides you with. You have Cloud Firestore, which is another um, real-time cloud-hosted NoSQL database that Firebase provides. And But it's not the real-time database, so it just has a different name and it different features. All right, so then you can have your analytics here. So you have performance and crash analytics, meaning you want to be able to report, you have your users report the bugs to you so you can go ahead and fix them in your code and all sorts of features. You can have cloud messaging. So this is used for using push notifications. So if you want to notify people using your application, you would use cloud messaging to send them a push notification. Um, a, B testing, as well as a series of other things. So you can always add extensions as well. So you can have shorter URLs, you could have translating text, you have resizing images. So you can just add a, a huge number of things. So the good thing about companies like Google is that they cover a wide variety of subjects, meaning most of the time, if you need something, there will be an extension or something related to what you need. All right, so now we're in our tutorial, we're actually going to go deeper into the Firebase real-time database. So let's just actually go there. And in another video, we can discuss the others. So let's just go to database. So here it's telling me to try, to try Cloud Firestore. So Cloud Firestore, like we said, is the other type of database that Firebase provides. So this is the um, database, this is the real-time database. It's sort of a hierarchical format, so I'm just going to expand the data, and this is what we have. So this is some sample data for a bunch of people or users, and here's how the data works. So now we're going to talk about the data and the data types that we have and how we can add and remove data, all right? So let's just get started. So it's a hierarchical database. So if you're for familiar with JSON, this will be a breeze for you because essentially Firebase is document oriented, meaning the, the data is stored within documents and these documents follow the sort of JSON format that we know. I have a video on JSON, you can check that out. All right, so here's what we have. We have the, um, this is the database, so it's the root node. The root node will always be the name of your database, of your project. All right, then I have a child node for it, and that's users. And within users, I have a series of all the users. So if I'm just going to collapse the data and open this up. So as we can see, these are the user IDs. So these are different JSON objects within users that, and each object from these, so we have uh, six objects, each object represents one user. 
And if you open it up, the values within this object are a series of key value pairs that define the um, that define the um, a user itself and provide data and details about this user. All right. So this is kind of what we have. You can also change the way you have a layout. So let's just we can do this manually now. So no coding required. So here I can say uh, name and then say John. And then I can add it. So now I have two child nodes for my root uh, DB. So instead of having one parent node that's hierarchical here, I just got a key value pair. So this is also an object. I can also have another hierarchical format. So I'm just going to say hierarchy and then add. Um, oops. Okay. So I'm just going to say hierarchy and not add. I'm going to use the plus. This always annoys me about the. Um, graphical user interface here because I always tend to go for add and then we can just say name and now we say John and then now we can add and here I have a hierarchy with the name John and your hierarchy can go pretty deep so if I add another thing here I can say um, some letters and then add and then another bunch of letters and then add and you can go infinitely deep with this however it's not recommended because you would just be losing the sort of um, flexibility with Firebase queries. Now, what do I mean by this? Firebase queries are more geared towards shallow data, meaning you're better off not going more than probably two levels deep within nesting your data. So you should stay within a good solid hierarchy, but make sure your data isn't too far nested because that would cause problems when you're trying to query the data and you would just run into a bunch of issues. So just keep that in mind. So this is sort of the structure that we have. We know that this is a NoSQL database, meaning the data points do not have to match each other. So let me just delete this hierarchy and just forget it was ever there. And I'm going to delete this as well. So let's just go to users and see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to expand. So as we can see, this user has address, age, first name, and last name. And a bunch of other users have the same. However, this user, so Mark Johnson, does not have an address. Why is that? This is mainly because um, it's a schemaless database, as most NoSQL databases are, meaning not all data points have to have the same attributes. So if you're familiar with SQL, you know that within one table, so if I have a table called person and I have columns called name, last name, uh, not age something, and then these sort of have to have the sort of same structure. Mean, meanwhile, in NoSQL, we do not have to follow the same schema for every single data point within a document, within a certain um, collection. So this is what we have. Now that you understand the NoSQL part of it, you understand the structure, let's just talk about the data types. So we said key value pairs. So here, users is actually a key value pair, where users is the key and the object itself is a series of objects. So it's everything within it. So it's a sort of array of objects. Let's just collapse it. So users is just the series of different user objects. Here, each object is a, also a key value pair. This object has the key of this generated ID. We'll talk about those in a minute. And these are the values. So the values are also a series of key value pairs. And these key value pairs would define what this object really is. All right, so what are these IDs? These IDs are timestamp generated by Firebase when you push data into it. You can choose to either set your own keys or use a generated key. Here, the key is generated. Here, the, the key is set because the key is users in this case. All right, here, the key is set because the key is age and the value is 20. But here, the key is not set, it is generated using the timestamp and a bunch of other random things that Firebase uses to create these keys. All right, so essentially this is what it is. You have a node or a key value pair. You have a key. The value can be another object. The object is a series of key value pairs like we know. So what does this mean? This means that you can have infinitely nested objects. However, it's not as recommended because you rather want to have a more shallow sort of format for your for easier queries. That's what makes Firebase a no SQL database. All right. So these are the key value pairs. Now we know that the value can be another object. So here users value is an object. 
the value can be an array of different objects. All right, so you have a sequence of objects separate, separated by commas or within an array, so same as JSON, and that's another type of value. So you have object, array. The third type of value is a scalar value, meaning you can have an integer, like here, 20, so there are no quotation marks, this is actually an integer, or you can have a string, so these are strings right here, we have quotation marks, or you can have a series of other things, such as um, booleans, so we can create something like uh, let's just add something here, adult, and just say true, and then we add it, and you, as you can see, it's, it does not have quotation mark, it is a boolean value. So this is the same type of data types that we have as programmers, but we also have the other parts which make it nested, such as arrays, objects, and then we have a scalar value. So I hope this is clear. I hope you can understand truly really how the real-time database is structured. Now, what happens from then on? From then on, we have to connect this database to a sort of application. So it's either going to be an Android or iOS application, or it's going to be a web application, including Python, which falls under the web part, even if it's a desktop application. So you're connected to this application. What you're going to do is that you're going to push and retrieve data from this database, and you're going to work with it the same way you would work with any other database in the world. So this is what makes the Firebase real-time database sort of unique, because it's part of a larger ecosystem of Firebase products. However, However, the Firebase real-time database on its own is really, um, is really just a simple cloud-hosted and real-time NoSQL database that syncs in real-time. So I really hope this was useful. I hope you know more about this database and I hope you're interested in maybe whether or not you should use it for your application. If your application requires a NoSQL database and it's more of a small, um, it's more of a small sort of small-scale application, go for it because it's not expensive at all. You can use this for free. Or you can maybe potentially want to scale and have larger applications in which you would have to pay money to keep benefiting from the Firebase services. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a like and a comment if it was interesting. Thank you.